Good afternoon, and welcome to our celebration of Holy Mass. Please join together as we sing number 311, as we gather at your table, number 311. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace and peace of God our Father, the love of the Lord Jesus Christ, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and prepare for the sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you came to reconcile us to one another and to the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You heal the wounds of sin and division. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You will come again in glory with salvation for your people. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, Receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory, God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Keep your family safe, O Lord, with unfailing care, that relying solely on the hope of heavenly grace, they may be defended always by your protection through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. In the year King Isaiah died, I saw the Lord seated on a high and lofty throne with a train of his garment filling the temple. Seraphim were stationed above. They cried one to the other, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. All the earth is filled with his glory. At the sound of that cry, the frame of the door shook and the house was filled with smoke. Then I said, Woe is me, I am doomed, 
for I am a man of unclean lips, living among a people of unclean lips. Yet my eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. Then one of the seraphim flew to me, holding an ember that he had taken with tongs from the altar. He touched my mouth with it and said, See, now that this has touched your lips, your wickedness is removed, your sin purged. Then I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send? Who will go for us? Here I am, I said, send me. The word of the Lord. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. I am reminding you, brothers and sisters, of the gospel I preached to you, which you indeed received, in which you also stand. Through it, you are also being saved, if you hold fast to the word I preached to you, unless you believed in vain. For I handed on to you as of first importance what I also received that Christ died for our sins in accordance with the scriptures, that he was buried, that he was raised on the third day in accordance with the scriptures, that he appeared to Cephas, then to the 12. After that, he appeared to more than 500 brothers at once, most of whom are still living, though some have fallen asleep. After that, he appeared to James, then to all the apostles, Last of all, as to one born abnormally, he appeared to me, for I am the least of the apostles, not fit 
to be called an apostle because I persecuted the church of God. But by the grace of God, I am what I am, and his grace to me has not been ineffective. Indeed, I have toiled harder than all of them, not I, however, but the grace of God that is with me. Therefore, whether it be I or they, so we preach and so you believed. The word of the Lord. With you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. While the crowd was pressing in on Jesus and listening to the word of God, he was standing by the lake of Gennesaret and two saw two boats there alongside the lake. The fishermen had disembarked and were washing their nets. And getting into one of the boats, the one belonging to Simon, he asked him to put out a short distance from the shore. And then he sat down and taught the crowds from the boat. And after he had finished speaking, he said to Simon, put out into deep water and lower your nets for a catch. And Simon said in reply, Master, we've worked hard all night and have caught nothing, but at your command I will lower the nets. And when they had done this, they caught a great number of fish, their nets were tearing. They signaled to their partners in the other boat to come to help them. They came and filled both boats so that the boats were in danger of sinking. When Simon Peter saw this, he fell at the knees of Jesus and said, Depart from me, Lord, for I am a sinful man. For astonishment at the catch of fish that they had made seized him and all with him. And likewise, James and John, the sons of Zebedee, who were partners of Simon. And Jesus said to Simon, Do not be afraid, for now you will be catching men. And when they brought their boats to the shore, they left everything and followed him. The Gospel of the Lord. Whether the call of Isaiah, the first reading, the call of Paul, his letter, or the call of the first disciples, Simon, James, and John, we see the initiative of grace. Not earned, not deserved, not worked for, but freely given. Grace taking the initiative. That grace that God offers to all has to be cooperated with. We have to open ourselves to it. Obstacles of grace, be it, the, be it through pride or a lack of humility, or whether it be in the case of those who feel themselves unworthy, is the only thing that can interfere with what God would do for us, through us. For he respects the human will, and the choice we make. In each case, there's a recognition that we don't deserve. They knew they didn't deserve. And thus, we become ever more grateful for the initiative of grace. In the first reading, we hear Isaiah. In the the year King Uzziah died, he remembered it. It's like when we say, where were you when President Kennedy was shot? So for Isaiah, the year King Uzziah died, which was memorable, I saw the Lord seated on a high and lofty throne, God who is transcendent, beyond us, above us, who awaits us. But the train of his garment was filling the temple. In other words, this this transcendent God was imminent. He was filling the place where Isaiah was. 
He was making himself accessible to him. He was inviting him into that recognition of who he is, to put him in the proper place, the center of our life that so often we can fill with so many other things to our detriment and our demise. But once he sees this glory of God, once he experiences this initiative of grace, he cries out, woe to me, I'm a man of unclean lips. I live among a people of unclean lips. So there it is, I'm not worthy. And throughout history, there are those who say they're not worthy and therefore the work of God goes undone through them or for them because they set themselves as the obstacle. It isn't our sin that is the obstacle. It is unrepentant, unconfessed, unrecognized sin that is the obstacle. God takes the initiative. And then we hear the beautiful image. The seraphim flew with an ember from, that he took with tongs from the altar and touched my mouth and said, now that this has touched your lips, your wickedness is removed, your sin purged. This image of the angel coming from the Lord, touching the lips of Isaiah, so that he could speak the word is the same spirit with which the priest, bowing low before the book of the Gospels, as I did just a moment ago, praise the Lord as he did with Isaiah, will touch his lips, that he might proclaim and preach the gospel worthily and well. Otherwise, I could never preach this gospel. I could never proclaim this gospel not worthy to do it if the qualification for doing it was complete conformity myself. The mouth I lend to Christ to proclaim this truth has to be accompanied by the ears that are my own to hear it and to act upon it. But grace comes. It would be arrogant to say, it's deserved, I've earned it. It comes despite. Paul would say the same thing. He speaks of this great gift. I am the least of apostles. I'm not fit to be called an apostle because I persecuted the church. But by the grace of God, I am what I am. And his grace to me has not been ineffective. Again, welcoming grace. Not setting ourselves up against it. Not pointing out others who could do it better. Again, oftentimes a false humility, sometimes a spiritual laziness, and yet in all cases, limiting what God would do for us and through us. And then finally in the gospel, we see Jesus, who was unknown to these men at this time, all of a sudden stepping into Peter's boat and using it as a pulpit. Because indeed, they who were in that boat as fishermen would be those he would send to the entire world to preach the good news. They had been hard at it. We're told they're even cleaning the nets. That's how, how much had gone into now being done. And Jesus says, put out into the deep. Don't just stay here at the shallows. That's where it's safe, we do that. We play in the puddles or just getting our feet wet but afraid to really dive in. What if I took this more seriously? What if I reached out to that person in need? If God's grace inspires it in us, his grace will provide it for us. But we have to trust in that spirit and not let our own timid nature keep us back, whether it be from him or the service of his people or response to the poor, the victims of injustice, the marginalized that are also clear around us the innocent and the most vulnerable, from the child in the womb to the refugee, to the person who often is profiled, labeled, cast off, or literally invisible to many. But it seems impossible. But if you say so, we'll do it. And they don't only catch some fish, they catch an incredible amount at the wrong time of the day. When God graces, it doesn't just get us by. It's more than we can imagine. But then what does Simon Peter do? The same thing Isaiah did. The same thing Paul said. 
Depart from me, I'm a sinful man. I'm not worthy of this grace. But at that moment, he had discovered what it would take to be able to receive that grace. The acknowledgement that he can't earn it, that he doesn't deserve it. And then love and mercy makes it overflow. That's why I don't know if you notice, but throughout the gospel we keep saying, and then Simon, and then Simon, and then Simon, because that was his name before Jesus would change it later. Except when we get to that one part of the gospel. So Simon said, Simon said, Simon said, and then, after the boats are almost sinking with the catch, when Simon Peter saw this, he fell at his knees, depart from me, Lord, I'm a sinful man. He was on his way to becoming Peter, who could lead because he would know how to serve, who could bring a gift to others because he was gifted by the grace of God. That transformation is possible for us as well. But God waits, not for us to feel worthy or to list why we're unworthy, but simply to say, as Isaiah did in the end, here I am. I believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, the maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made for us men and for our salvation. He came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit, as the incarnate of the Virgin Mary, became man. For our sake, he was crucified, Pontius Pilate, suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us in confidence place our hearts before the Lord. For all of us, the church, given the call to cast the nets, extend the invitation, and be the living example of what it means to embrace and follow Jesus, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those the Lord is calling to be fishers of men, for our seminarians, Joe, Bobby, and Dan, and for all in formation or feeling the nudge to explore the call, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all married couples, and for all preparing for marriage or discerning engagement. May they embrace God's plan for this awesome vocation, living it out freely, faithfully, and fruitfully, and realizing the value of chastity in growing the mutual love and respect in time of courtship and engagement, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the sick in body, mind, or soul, and for all who seek to bring them comfort and healing and help, May they never lose the sight of the nearness of Jesus in times we carry our cross. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have gone before us and have no one to pray for them, and for all our departed loved ones, especially Peter Scontris, for whom this Holy Mass is offered today, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the needs in our hearts and in our book of intentions, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Grant us, O Lord, the eyes to see you, ears to hear you, hands to embrace you, heart to love you, particularly when you come in distressing disguises and those easily overlooked or cast aside, and especially those innocent ones who these days are not simply disrespected but attacked in the womb of their mothers. We ask you to help us to say yes, here I am, and to find the opportunities to be living witnesses of truth through Christ our Lord. Amen.
please join together in singing number 503, Lord, You Have Come, number 503. Pray, brethren, my sacrifice and yours will be acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. O Lord, our God, who once established these created things to sustain us in our frailty, grant, we pray, that they become for us now the sacrament of eternal life through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Lift up the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right it is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you so loved the world that in your mercy you sent us the Redeemer. <coughs> he lived like us in all things but sin, so that he might make known to us the love that you have. By his obedience, we have been renewed, our sins forgiven, the sins that we have lost through disobedience. And so, Lord, with all the angels and the saints, we praise you as with exaltation we acclaim.
You therefore, Almighty Father, we bless through Jesus Christ, your Son, who comes in your name. He himself is the word that brings salvation, the hand you extend to sinners, the way by which your peace is offered to us. When we ourselves had turned away from you on account of our sins, you brought us back to be reconciled, O Lord, so that, converted at last to you, we might love one another through your Son, whom, for our sake, you handed over to death. And now, celebrating the reconciliation Christ has brought us, we entreat you, sanctify these gifts by the outpouring of the Holy Spirit, that they become for us the body and blood of your beloved Son, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For when he was about to give his life to set us free, as he reclined at supper, he himself took bread into his hands, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. Then, in a similar way, on the same evening, Jesus took the chalice of blessing in his hands and confessing your mercy, he gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Celebrating, therefore, the memorial of the death and resurrection of your Son, who left us his pledge of his love, we offer you what you have bestowed on us, the sacrifice of perfect reconciliation. Holy Father, we humbly beseech you to accept us together with your Son, and in this saving banquet, graciously to endow us with his very Spirit, who takes away everything that estranges us from one another. And may he make your church a sign of unity and an instrument of your peace among all people, May he keep us in communion with Francis, our Pope, Peter, our Bishop, all the bishops and the entire people. Just as you have gathered us here around the table of your Son, so also bring us together with the glorious Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, and all the saints, and with our brothers and sisters, and those of every race and tongue who have died in your friendship. Bring us to share with them the unending banquet of unity in a new heaven and a new earth where the fullness of your peace will shine forth in Christ Jesus the Lord. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Savior's command and form by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, so that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
we offer each other a sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Please join together in singing number 378, Here I Am, Lord, number 378.
Let us pray. O God, who have willed that we be partakers in the one bread and the one chalice, grant us, we pray, so to live made one in Christ and joyfully bear fruit for the salvation of the world through Christ our Lord. Amen. If you'd like to be part of our 2020 club, you can see Joe in the back of the church. In The, the table is on the left-hand side. Uh, next weekend will be the last opportunities, so if you have yet to and could help us out, uh, just see Joe Mitchell in the back of the church. As you page through the bulletin, there's a lot of special things coming, particularly um, parish Lenten reading effort and opportunities that will surround that. There's a full page talking about it, as well as giving a description of Into His Likeness, that book which will form our prayer, meditation, and sharing this Lent. There's also a men's morning and women's morning of renewal coming up, and all of that is outlined uh, clearly in the bulletin. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth, glorify the Lord by your life. Amen. Please join together in singing number song number 615, Lord Whose Love and Humble Service, number 615. 